The Rams won their first Super Bowl in Los Angeles, and Matt Stafford finally has a ring. Welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Destiny Sanchez alongside Joe Callahan Jr. and Juan Mendez. With a strong presence of Ram fans in the crowd of over 70,000, the team became the only second to win in the Lombardi Trophy in its home stadium. Joe, I'll start with you. The Rams came a long way to get to this point. What were some key factors in this game that allowed them to hoist the Lombardi Trophy? Well, first, guys, I'm disappointed. And the reason why I'm disappointed is because I picked the Bengals to win last week. And I could go into the refs being not consistent for the first three quarters and then suddenly wanting to call penalties in the fourth. I can get to that. I could talk about the secondary and the O-line, who I had trust in last week and then fumbled the bed. I, I just disappointed in the veteran, Tyler Boyd. My man had one catch literally zero drops the entire season to send his team over the 50 yard line on a third and nine had so much space to gain that first down and then dropped it and i believe that that's what keeps joe burrow from hoisting up that trophy and i mean it was the cinderella story coming i mean they were sacked seven times up to that point you had one more drive one more play one more catch ultimately couldn't get it done and i think if he catches that ball that it, it's a different victor yeah, it was really close. It came up to a lot of moments like that. And I also chose the Bengals to win, but I must say why I was more impressed by the Rams and the way they turned this game around. Now, what they did is they couldn't control the Bengals in the beginning of the, the half at all. And they noticed that. And what they did is, okay, what's the difference maker here? It was Aaron Donald and allowing him to get one-on-ones because you know what happens when Aaron Donald isn't a one-on-one. -on -one. So they removed those triple teams, double teams that they were throwing at him by rushing on the opposite side of him that way they could free up some space and not let Joe Burrow breathe. Because if you can let if you let Joe Burrow breathe for a couple seconds, Jamar Chase is down there, five yards open, even on Ramsey, who is probably the best corner in the entire league. So those seconds are, were so precious in this Super Bowl. And those seconds, that adjustment was something that gave the Rams the win. And I was really impressed by that because it was instant from the beginning of the second half. I'm with you guys there. I was rooting for the Bengals coming into this game. But I got to say, um, coming into that first quarter, I just sensed a lot of more urgency from the Rams. You made a good point. Those little things is what matters to this end result. And you know, there were a lot of standout players that are crucial factors to this end result. So Juan, I'm gonna start with you. Who were some players that stood out to you in your eyes? I'm gonna talk about an X factor on offense because we know Donald did his thing in this game. But I'm gonna talk about Cooper Cup because while well, offensive player of the year, he was the MVP of the Super Bowl. And what they did is they knew to use him more. He, got, he had eight catches, but they really sparked in the third quarter when they were switching everything around. All the momentum carried over. One Stafford knew, okay, wherever he is, I'm gonna give this guy the ball because he knows what to do with it. He was making a fool out of Eli Apple. And you could see that in how comfortable Matthew Stafford was throwing that ball up. They isolated that. You could see it coming from a mile away. He knew, I'm gonna throw it up. Eli Apple's not gonna turn around. And Cooper Cup, the best offensive player in the entire league is gonna make a play. So I think he's the standout player by a lot of reasons, and that's why he was crowned as the MVP. But overall, this, the way that offense, this, the changes they made, Daryl Henderson bringing him back into, it's something that was very smart by the Rams, but overall, just Cooper Cup getting in there, you saw it coming, and he performed like he should. Yeah, I mean, Cooper Cup is probably the number one receiver in the league now, but I'm going to go into the man throwing the ball, the reason why they won this game, because Cooper Cup was on that team when they lost the Super Bowl to the Patriots. I'm going with Matt Stafford. Over 275 yards through the air, three touchdowns, and realistically only one interception. The second one wasn't really his fault. And really only two questionable throws after that, the one to Van Jefferson in the end zone, and then the behind the bell, uh, behind the receiver and toward OBJ's hamstring. I mean, if, if we're talking about what swayed that game, Odell's injury is definitely up there. But I mean, Jared Goff, that trade coming back from you know, th that Super Bowl year, then having the down year, and then now you trade him for a star-studded Matthew Stafford. I mean, Matt Stafford might be the actual Matty Ice. Don't come at me with Matt Ryan anymore. My man has consistently won comeback games on the Lions. It, you look at that record that he had in, on that team, and it could have been worse without his game-winning drives to come to the, this team in the first year and win the Super Bowl. You gotta give him his props. Yeah, there's a lot of changes that went on, a lot of adversity that these two teams went through this entire season. Where do you guys see these two teams in the future um, moving on to next season? That is a great, great question because the Rams, you always think about it once a team wins the Super Bowl, do you think, okay, could they do it again next year? 
And that is one of the most difficult things to do. Very few teams, they have done it. It's possible, but it's extremely, extremely difficult. Now, this team, what they did throughout the season was pick up a bunch of puzzle pieces, close, thing, close things around, figure it out as they go, especially with OBJ, great signing, Von Miller, another great signing, getting his second ring. And they signed Eric Weddle, who retired, I believe, two years ago on that Rams team. Those little pieces that they picked up, the only problem with that is that a lot of them were temporary. They were for this season, they were for one year, and they have a lot of money to spend if they want to bring a roster this good once again. So I'm really looking forward to see what the Rams can do, but also a lot of teams know the power that they have. They know the assets that they have when they're healthy because they had all running backs healthy as well in this one. And once Woods come back, we'll see what they do with uh, OBJ again if he recovers. Hopefully he's all fine. But overall, a lot of those pieces are not perpetual. A lot of those pieces, they might come and go, but if they're able to rebuild and keep a stable position, they could definitely be back deep in the playoffs again. Yeah, I think either way the Rams are going to be back, but the team that isn't really going to come back anytime soon, I would think, is the Bengals. The Bengals have so much more to do. I mean, you win a playoff game with nine sacks and then four, and then now in the Super Bowl, seven, that's a problem. Bridgeboro was sacked 70 times this season, third most ever. That's a problem. They're secondary, again, Eli Apple should not be a number one corner on a team. Uh, you, you saw that in New York when he got traded from there. And, and now you bring it to a Super Bowl team, unfathomable what Joe Burrow has done. But they have to rebuild the entire O-line in my mind, and they have to rebuild the entire uh, secondary except for Ouzier. I think he's the only one that is safe on that team or on that secondary at all. I think they have to rebuild that entire thing. And what's, what's scary is they don't have the draft picks to do it. They have a lot of cap, but they're not going to get a, a big draft pick because they made it to the Super Bowl. Unfathomable how. But th this team just has so much to do with so little assets that they just have to hope for free agents, trades, or something like that. Cause, or they have to hope for a second-round, third-round pick on the O-line, maybe late first, to just pop off and go nuts. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think the Bengals do have a lot of rebuilding to do. But overall, I thought the game was pretty interesting, pretty intense the entire time, back and forth. Um, and the overall season, what a great season, I think. It was a great season to watch. That's all we have for this edition of Penn State Sports Night. For Joe Callahan and, jo and Juan Mendez, I'm Destiny Sanchez, and we'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning into this edition of Penn State Sports Night. We hope you liked that segment. And we're sure there's other Penn State Sports Night segments that you are going to love as well. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. And check us out on social media for updates and behind the scenes clips and pics. Follow us on Twitter at PSSNTV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all of us here at the Belisari Media Center, we are Penn State Sports Night.